actually we're going to work some smaller test type questions, questions that could be small enough to fit on multiple choice type questions. So here we have A, B, and C are partners dissolving the partnership. The partnership agree, uh, agreement allocates income and loss equally among the partners. The current period's ending capital account balances are A has 15.4, B has 15.4, C has a negative balance in the capital account of 2,400. After all the assets are sold and the liabilities are paid, but uh, before any contributions to cover any deficiencies, there is 28.4 in the cash to be distributed. C pays 2,400 to cover the deficiency in the account. The journal, uh, the journal entry to record the final transaction would be what? So there's a couple ways you can kind of think about this. A lot of people think about it in terms of a table. If you put the trial balance in there, you could see the, you know, the debits and credits. So let's take a look at it in, in both ways here. Uh, what they're saying is there's, there's, they're going to liquidate the partnership, meaning dissolve it and take the cash out and leave. And if we look at the trial balance, they're basically saying, hey, there's in the trial balance, they have cash of 28.4. And we have A, B, and C are the cap, are the uh, owners. And, and there's nothing left except cash because they sold everything else. They did it properly. They, you know, they sold all their assets, they paid all their liabilities, now all they have is cash and the capital balances, meaning the capital balances are 15400 and we have 15400, I'm putting a credit for um, with negative numbers, and then we have a debit balance here. So if we looked at it in terms of debits and credits, cash is a debit, credit to the capital account, credit to the capital account, a negative capital account which has this negative balance, and if we sum that up, then we would have the debits minus the credits like so and that would equal zero so we would that's basically what we're seeing in balance if we looked at it in terms of a table we can say that we have cash here then we've got a b and c and the cash equals the 28.4 and we have a is 15.4 we have b 15.4 and we have c negative 2400 and kind of like if we look at the accounting equation on that then the total of the equity section a b and c is going to be equal to the cash. Now, the problem here is that C owes the company money. So the question is, is it, it, you know, is C going to pay the company like they, they should before the distribution happens because the C owes the money back. So if that happens, that's great. Then C would pay the company, meaning cash would go up by 2400, which is what they're saying happened. And this capital account balance would go down by 2400. So in terms of a table, that would mean that we'd have 28.4 in cash plus uh, the new cash that was put in it's not being distributed to the partners and of course C's equity account would be this plus this which makes it go down plus a negative number to zero so C doesn't have any capital A still has that B still has that if we add up the equity side then again we're equal to cash this is kind of like the accounting equation assets equal liabilities which we don't have any and equity so assets equal liability and equity. If we look at it in terms of like a trial balance, then if this was the adjustment column, we would say that um, cash went up with a debit of 2400. And so the ending balance then would be the 284 plus the 2400. And this capital account went down with a credit because C put money in, reduced, and so we're gonna say this equals the 2400, or it actually goes up to zero in terms of the credit balance, plus the credit. And there we have that. And if we pull over the other numbers, then this is the ending balance. So this is the beginning trial balance. Here's our adjustment. Here's the ending trial balance. And of course, it's still in balance. So the journal entry is in balance. Ending balance is in balance, meaning cash equals the equity accounts. Debits equal the credits. So now then, we can make the journal entry to basically close this out. And, it's, and we can see that there's cash if we look at it in the trial balance. Or if we look at it in the table, the cash has a debit balance of... 30,800, we need to credit cash. So I'm gonna credit cash, and I'm gonna put that over here. I'm gonna represent the credit with a negative, and that's gonna be 3800, and then uh, 30800, and I'm gonna make it a credit with a negative number, and then we're gonna debit A and B's capital accounts. So A and B's capital accounts are here, and we're gonna say that we're gonna just debit whatever's left, and that's gonna be the uh, 154, and the 15.4. So the debits equal the credits. Now, if we looked at that in terms of a table, I'm gonna scroll down, so we don't need the data anymore. So I'm gonna scroll down like this. I'm gonna pull this down a bit. That's our journal entry. 
pull this down. Now if we looked at that in terms of a table, then of course the cash is going down to zero, 30,800. We don't really see the debits and credits here. The, uh, the A is going to go down to zero, 15,4. Capital count, 15,4. B is going to go down to zero. And C didn't have anything in there in the first place. And that of course makes everything go to zero. That closes out the company. If we looked at it in terms of the, of the journal entry, if we had this, this as our journal entry, I'm going to pull this down here. And if we're saying that we ended at this point, and then we're going to record, obviously, this journal entry, then we're going to credit cash. I'm going to say the cash is going to be credited. So I'm just going to say that's the credit there. And then we're going to debit this. And we're going to debit this. So the ending, if this was where we started, and this is our new transaction, we're going to say this is this plus this goes to zero. This is this plus this goes to zero. And this is this plus this goes to zero. So now they have liquidated. And A and B have left the company with 15 for each. C doesn't get anything because C actually owed the company, the partnership in this case, money. Next one says that A is a partner in a partnership. An analysis of A capital account indicates that during the, the most recent year, she withdrew 25,000 from the partnership. Her share of the partnership's net loss, keyboard loss, not income, was 18,500, and she made an additional equity contribution of 15,000. Her capital account ended at 155,000. What was her capital balance at the beginning of the year? This is a typical kind of um, multiple choice type or small type question in that they're making us back into a number which in real life we normally would be known and we would back into the ending balance. But it's good for uh, test taking purposes to test the knowledge. So normally I, I would put this into our normal calculation and then figure out the formula. So usually when we try to figure out the capital balance we have the beginning balance and that's the unknown so I'll make it yellow. We don't know that which we normally would. And then everything else that happened on a capital account indicates that the most she withdrew. So draw draws normally would decrease because that would decrease the amount that the comp, that the business or the partnership in this case owes to her. So that would be in twenty five thousand. So whatever that first number is minus twenty five thousand. Uh, her share of the partnership net loss. Now there wasn't income; it was a loss. If it was income, it would increase the capital balance. But in this case, it was a net loss. Therefore, her share of the loss, 18.5, decreasing whatever that beginning balance is. She made an additional equity contribution, so she actually put more money in. She drew money out and put money in. That's kind of unusual. Hopefully, we draw and not put money in, but we had both things happen. We contribute another 15,000. And then they told us what the ending balance is, which is usually what we figure out. So the ending balance they told us was 155,000. That is normally what we would calculate. So I'm going to underline this. So if we think about the formula, then it's what is this minus this minus this plus this should equal that. So, I mean, if we wrote that out algebraically, it would be 155. Well, let's do it this way. I'm just going to say uh, X minus uh, 25,000 minus 185 plus 15,000 would then equal this 155 thousand and then we could we could of course solve for this these are all on the same side so we could uh, add those up so if we added these three up it adds up to 28.5 or if we took the calculator here we'd say it's I'm gonna take the positive number first it's the 15,000 minus the 25,000 minus the 18.5 is 28.5 negative so if we rewrote that then of course we would have x uh, minus the what did I say it was 20 28 5 28 5 negative and we're gonna say equals the 155 thousand and then of course now we have we're gonna subtract from both sides or add to both sides this 28 5 so if I add 28 5 to this side and 28 5 to that side we end up with x is going to equal and then we have the 155,000 plus the 28.5, which is 183.5. So I'm going to say 183.5. And then we could test this. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to say, okay, let's pull this over here and say, um, what if we put in 
this 18035 and then have these numbers the same and then sum this up and see if the normal calculator is going to be this plus the I mean minus this minus this plus this that's what our sum function is doing and we get the 155 so it looks correct there uh, if you want to just kind of do it a little bit quicker than to have this formula you might try to think about it like this way you'd say okay uh, you know this and then all these things so what if I just combine these into one number so if we summed these up it would be the sum of these three numbers and then we still have this unknown X which I'll, I'll just make yellow again and then we know that this ending number and so then we can kind of think well uh, you know this is a it's it's this minus this equals that so in order to back into this it's either going to be a subtraction or an addition problem you can try either one we could say this plus this and uh, that can't work because this minus this does not equal that well let's try this minus this and okay this minus this then equals that so you can kind of test it that way if you just combine these numbers without writing it out algebraically in this format and solving it for it algebraically I mean if you break it down you basically break it down to three numbers and then just kind of use some reason and some trial and error to uh, get the number might be a bit quicker.